Let's take a look at Excel's T, I, and V, or T inverse function. This is a function that helps you convert a p-value, or uh, area under a t-model curve, to a t-score. You have to feed it the area under both tails, the combined area of two tails, and you have to give it a degree of freedom for the t-model you're working with, and it will return to you the positive t-score which cuts off those two areas. This is the ideal function for working with uh, confidence intervals associated with means. The sampling distribution of a mean follows a student T model in the case where we don't know the population standard deviation. And confidence intervals are always associated with two-tail probabilities. So let's take a look at an example of where this comes in handy. Here's a problem that says the data below shows a sample of the amounts of money grossed by movies with PG or PG-13 ratings. Those are on the left and a sample of the amounts grossed by movies with R ratings. Those are on the right. Assume the samples are simple random samples taken from normally distributed populations. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the difference between the mean amount grossed by movies with PG or PG-13 ratings and the mean amount grossed by movies with R ratings. The assumption about the samples being simple random samples from normally distributed populations allows us to use the student T model to uh, approximate the sampling distribution of the difference of these two means. So the information is coming to us in these two tables. In order to get any statistics that allow us to do our computations here, we first need to compute descriptive statistics for both samples. So over here I'm going to type in count and I'm going to highlight the first sample. Uh, it looks like my highlighting went a little crazy. So what it should look like in Excel is equals count open parenthesis and in this case it's C32 colon C54 which is pointing Excel to the column that contains my first sample gross earnings. I need to compute the sample mean so that's the average function. Again I'm going to select the same range and I need to compute the standard deviation that's STDEV and again I'm going to select the same range and that gave me the descriptive statistics I need for the first sample. An easy way to get the same descriptive statistics for the second sample is just copy and paste those three formulas over to the appropriate column. So what I see is my PG, my PG sample has 23 elements in it. The me, sample mean was 141 with a standard deviation of 91.86. My R sample had 12 elements in it, mean of 81, and standard deviation of 51.88. Now I'm ready to start computing my confidence interval. So the first thing I need to do is actually look at the difference. So I'm going to take the mean of the PG and subtract the mean of the R. And that gives me a point estimate of 60 million dollars as a difference of the two means. The standard error needs to be computed with the standard error formula. Again, this is a standard error and not a standard deviation because we do not have the population standard deviations. So the only thing we can do is use the, the sample standard deviations to approximate that. So that's going to be the square root of S1 squared divided by the first sample size, which is 23, plus S2 squared divided by the second sample size, which is 12 and I'm getting a standard error for the sampling distribution of difference of means of 24.31. In order to compute the critical value, I need to use the TI and V function. Before we do that, we need to know what, what degrees of freedom to use. Well, the convention we're using in this course is when we're talking about two independent samples, we're going to look at each sample size minus 1. So for the first one, it's 23 minus 1, that's 22. For the second one, it's 12 minus 1, that's 11 and we're going to use the lower of the two as our degree of freedom. All I'm going to do is type in TI and V. Remember that the TI and V function is expecting the area of two tails. Well, this problem is asking me to compute a 95% confidence interval, which means the area of the two tails will be the complement of that. So I'm going to type TI and V of 0 0.05 and comma, the degrees of freedom that we just decided on was 11. What that does is it gives me a critical t-score for cutting off the central 95% of a area under a student t model with 11 degrees of freedom. That's all I need in order to compute the margin of error. The margin of error is just going to be that critical value 
times the standard error we just computed. And that, coupled with our point estimate of 60, allows us to construct our actual confidence interval. So the left endpoint would be the center, which is 60, minus the margin of error. The right endpoint will be the center, which is 60, plus the margin of error. Our conclusion or description of this confidence interval in context is that we are 95% confident that the gross earnings of PG or PG-13 movies are between $6.49 million and $113.51 million greater than our movies.